I started working here at Sherwood Care at the very beginning of the pandemic, so I got laid off from my other jobs and I had a friend working here and she said, um, apply, it's a great place to work. And so I came in in July and it was stressful at the beginning, it was scary, like you're in kind of like the war zone, they were saying, this is where you don't want COVID. So my name is Amanda and I've been the social worker here at Sherwood Care for nine years. And so the entire time that I have been a social worker here at the facility, we have never encountered a pandemic. Um, we've gone through different things like uh, outbreaks with the flu and GI, but nothing like um, COVID and, and nobody has. And so it really turned our world upside down. Um, for me personally as the chaplain, um, I felt the, the impact on the staff was real, um, especially at the beginning as, as things were, were going into that kind of quarantine isolation, kind of shutting off the outside world. Um, and the, the feeling that, that the staff had of, you know, like any minute now this is going to, to hit us and seeing all the things in the paper and reading and hearing all the things in the news, we very much felt that sense of this is, this is hitting the community that we serve the hardest. Um, I would be lying if I said we weren't worried. All you had to do was read the news and the devastation in seniors care facilities was extraordinary and, and heartbreaking. Uh, at one point in time, deaths of seniors in continuing care facilities was the highest amount of deaths across Canada, and certainly in this province as well. So there was certainly an awareness um, as it progressed of how severe it was and the challenges that we had as an organization. We brought on different people into different roles, and that was very deliberate to be able to, for instance, we have infection control and support nurse who uh, they do uh, audits and they're on every shift. And so it's just to remind the staff of their processes, making sure that they're following things that go along with the requirements for using proper PPE and hand hygiene, all the things that keep us safe. And, and just really remembering um, that whoever comes into the building, they're coming into the resident's home. This is their home. So we did what we always do. We pulled together as a team and we asked for God's direction and wisdom and we prayed for his protection. We actually prayed that he would provide a hedge of protection around Sherwood Care. And often in that prayer, we would say everybody in the building and everybody connected with it because that included the families and the community members who supported the organization. Uh, and then we started what we do. We pulled our staff together. We showed them this is where we're at. We, you know, this is what we know. This is what we're going to do. What do you think? What do you suggest? How can we support you? And we just continued that frequent and consistent communication because it was sometimes changes were happening daily or weekly. And so we had to maintain that communication with them. And we found creative ways to communicate, texting, um, emailing systems that we hadn't done before with staff. So technology certainly played a big part of that. I started in the pandemic, so I don't quite know what it was like before, but I developed some really strong relationships with a lot of the residents, not having their families there all the time, especially like everybody took on a kind of a different role and more of like a friend and a family member sometimes. I have one resident that I'm quite close with. I go see her every time I'm here and we were just chatting the other day how nice it's gonna be when we can take the masks off because we're so close. She tells me she loves me and I've never, she's never seen me without my mask on. So I'm very excited for that. I know we had a resident uh, we just recently, who recently moved in and her, his, um, it was the daughter and her, her father was moving into here. And when I sat in the missions um, meeting with one of the other staff members, she was just concerning, was concerned because she was talking about how, you know, the current place her dad was in was not, you know, the greatest and wasn't meeting his spiritual needs. And she was just so happy that she's, um, Alberta Health Services was able to move him here so he could, um, be, have a more spiritual environment and, you know, grow his faith with God. And that just really, like, that really touched me to see that, you know, God moves in different ways. He, he, treats, he treats everyone equally and he comforts everyone in his own way. And that was just really, really touching for me when I was in that admissions interview, so. And I can say for myself, um, there's not a day that I haven't come to work where I don't pray on the way here. I ask that God would put an angel, like so a hedge of protection around um, 
this entire property, protecting those who are within, all of our residents and their families and our staff that come to work and our families, so that I know we love our residents very, very much. And I would never want to be the one that would bring, you know, illness into any of them. You know, we want to see um, them well. Um, we really talk to the staff about our mission and vision. We are known for these things. We can continue to provide quality care. We just have to look at it a little bit differently. Uh, so we also really looked at supporting the staff because we knew they are the heart and soul of the organization. They are our front line. And if they crash and burn, then, then we would be in trouble. So, you know, lots of things were done to support the staff. Increase um, access to our employee assistance program, access to our internal chaplain, social worker for support, and food, lots of food. I, I mean, food is such a simple gift, but it's tangible and it's in the moment and it's appreciated. So whether it was the food truck, whether it was meals, feel free meal tickets, whether it was ice cream, honoring them consistently and regularly <coughs> and thanking them and acknowledging them for their work was really important. You hear these stories of, of how other facilities had to go into this like complete lockdown isolation state and and for us we never had that experience in fact quite the opposite we worked very hard to maintain as much normal as possible.